Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. In 1942, in the cold desert of a small border town of Texas, a group of kind are kidnapped and mass embraced by members of the fanatical sect, the Sabbat. Out of this group, only a handful survived, and through rituals and mentorship, they became the pack known as the Pale Riders. Representing the Sword of Cain, they are wielded by a mentor to cut deep wounds within the heartland of Mexico to the enemies of the Sabbat. Wars on Fire is a vampire the masquerade Sabbat chronicle that follows the Pale Riders pack that consists of Mitch, a Lazombra played by Adam, Coyote, a Ravenous anti tribute played by Alex, Eldrick, a Katif played by David, Jasper, a Bruja anti tribute played by Joaquin, Cora, a Shimizi played by Slavic, and Richard, a Venture anti tribute played by Tillman. If you'd like to contact us, you can find us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM or on Facebook at twin cities by night. We hope you enjoy. Currently, right now, we're going to catch up to Jasper to rest of the group. So let's go ahead and jump into this here. So uh, Jasper, uh, what had happened is after you had frenzied, Toyota came down and told you that Elanipi had wanted to speak to you. Uh, just as a reminder, you know, you had just ripped one of the men's heads off who you and Cora had kidnapped after you had him tied to the tree, like how Vidar had the victims of the Valdry tied up. Mm -hmm. And so you had pretty much had like ripped his head off and had all that you were drenched in blood completely, almost like from like mid waist up, you know, just just covered in just like pure crimson described to the group, how almost like when you open your eyes, the white of your eyes was like the only thing in your teeth that or even your teeth had maroon in there but were the only thing that weren't touched by the by the blood you gotta pay the piper mr uh jasper so if i could get a conscious roll difficulty eight please all yeah, right nine to ten you feel after you did that oh wow two successes as you're walking off after like coyote tells you that ilanipi wants to go talk to you you know you're slowly walking with the gravel under your shoes and the dust kicking up a little bit and you're watching like the blood drip as you're looking down you're watching the blood like drip off your nose and and splatter on the ground and like drip off from your hands and you get like you you almost get like gut punched for a second with guilt a little bit with what you did because you realize that like what had just happened wasn't part of your whole eugenics worldview plan what happened almost you feel was like you know what I mean? And, and and while you are losing humanity, this was uncharacteristic of you to take a random white male, you know what I mean, and, and treat him in that way. What's going on in your mind? I mean, like like when that occurs. I've been too, I've been too drunk on my pa- my newfound power. I must must find I must hold myself to higher standards. That is why I was chosen, after all. <sighs> That we are elevated to be greater than we were before. I cannot allow myself to sink so low again. And you're feeling that as you walk up, walk into the hotel, and you're walking up these steps, and you still hear like the drip of the blood hitting the wood. You know what I mean? As it slowly starts to coagulate on your hands, as you're grabbing the banister, you see like your hand leaves like a print, and a print. You know what I mean? As you go up until the third floor where Ilanipi was staying, and where where Coyote brought Ilanipi into. And you go up to the door, and the door is open, and you hear before you even see Elanipi, you hear him like, come in here, young one. And as you come in, you see him sitting up on this couch that had like a sheet that was like thrown over it, you know, to keep the dust off. You see like two bodies that are tied up. They're not dead. They're just like these. One is one of the men that you kidnapped, and the other is a man that Coyote actually kidnapped on his own. And you see Elanipi sitting up to describe again, like, you know, one of his arms was ripped off. He looks pretty, he has like this rancid smell that seems to be coming from him of like spoiled meat. Looks pretty beat up. He looks at you and he says, you're going to spend some time here with me while the others travel, but you will catch up with them. Yes, I must have time to convalesce, I suppose, as Jasper like rubs at the, at the wound on his chest. Yes, your pack worries about you, Jasper. They were worried about your about your fortitude and your health uh, after the confrontation that you had. Yes. But not only physically, it seems to be mentally. It seems like quite a, a couple members of your brood seem to be having a hard time evolving into what we are become, what you have the potential to become. 
Yes, I just came. I came to the conclusion myself not too just a moment ago. It's it's easy to lose oneself and uh, in all of it that has a has uh, we have gained since our change. It's intoxicating well, at times. It is. You have to look at the beast like a companion. It is not something to fear. But I saw what you did down there. While I can understand what you did to embrace the beast more, to become one with the beast, and not to lose the last grips of what you once were and let it bring you down with it. And you see him slowly. He gets up and he starts like he motions over, to, not motions. He walks towards that faces out in the courtyard and faces out to the 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 fountain that was out there. And he leans against it. He, he turns and looks at you. He doesn't expect you to stand or anything, you know. And he and he's he's. He says, I've seen many, many strong members of this sort of Cain who at times lost themselves because they simply could not let go of what they used to be. I am not telling you this because I feel that you are, and I hope you don't take it that way, but I feel that your pack needs mentorship of a sort. And as my duty, mentor and a brother to you all, he looks out the window and he's looking at, you can hear the car starting and you can hear like, you know, he's looking out and he's, he has, you hear two vehicles take off. Tell me about yourself before you were brought over. You wouldn't have talked to a man like me, would you have? Uh, there weren't that. many men quite like you back east. They had all been pushed out west by the time I was a child. Back then it was just Europeans of different stock and breed all around. It was, it was strange, honestly. Just looking back now, it's it was so strange to see how people just they were all the state they're all mixing together just it was it, didn't they see the chaos that would evolve they didn't they see that by staying true to who they were they could they can keep the keep their family stronger over time i i i, I had many of my kind who felt that way when i was mortal who felt that we shouldn't work or trust the white man or trust even other tribes that reside in the same land jasper do not be smudge yourself in the filth that is our food, that is our cattle, that is below us. Do you understand? You are elevated now. Take that passion. Take that belief. For I cannot change who you are, but take that belief and elevate that belief too. Take into our cause and to fight in the slaves of the antediluvians and their control in this world. Finding where they lurk in the shadows and they pull their strings like the cowards they are. Hoping to, to help them awaken so they can feed off us not realizing that the very people they serve are going to consume their souls too. Do you understand? I understand. Good. And he turns around, he, he looks out the window. <sighs> this is what's going to happen. You're going to contemplate on your own and you are going to heal. Assume that you are fed enough. If not, the emotions to, you can have one of these two. But I have something planned for both of them, or at least one. I am good for the night. If I need any more, I will... Thank you. Sit them up and awaken them for me, if you would. And they like motions to the two. All right. So Jasper goes over to them and says, like, wake up. We have your request. Your audience is requested. And you see, like, both these figures, like, like are kind of shaking. You can tell one's, like, the one who who you kidnapped. He's barely holding on to his sanity with, like, what what. The, the the weakest of strings and you can see that the other one is just is just at the point where he's probably concussed assume that coyote probably bashed him a couple times across the head to get him in a state to be easily carried he motions for you motions for you to bring him forth to him he's like bring him forth to me sit him down on his knees before me i do so See, like, this figure he like i had to explain again he's like this real kind of scrawny 60 year old guy he, 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 where normally if it was a normal, uh, like in modern day, he'd probably be obese, but due to the war, the cur the great war that's going on and not there being a lot of food and supplies for people who are left back in the States, he's, 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 he's rather skinny and kind of has a yellowish almost tinge to his skin. Like he's almost John distant in a way. And you see, uh, Ilanipi as you, as you set the guy down on his knees and you step back, Ilanipi with his hand grabs some of the guy's greasy, grayish, dark hair that hasn't fallen already out of his head and like and like almost like brings him his head forth for like a foot and then he like a snake snip like sneaks his face up into his. And it's almost like he's holding the guy's face and he's looking at him 
from a side angle, he turns the guy's face with his one hand because he only has one hand. And you see as the guy's like, his eyes are about to roll in the back of his head. He looks panicked and panicked. And as he's like, face is turned to look at Ilanipis, you feel like this tension almost in the air. Like, it's almost like the, it's, it's crazy too, because if the blood wasn't already coated over your arms, you, you'd say almost like your arm hair would rise up a little bit, like your skin would get goose flesh. And you see that the guy's eyes go from panicked and, and almost rolling up to like the pin, the, 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 the pupils become dilated completely almost as like if he's and ta- uh, like under the influence of some type of drug or opiate you know what i mean and you see as ilanipi is staring at him and there's like this odd like like two, two minutes where nothing's said and you can see the guys breathing and at this point they're close almost like they were lovers about to kiss but there's nothing like that in the in this and and the way that they are right now and slowly you hear ilanipi go serve the one who is standing over there to sleep you will drive and when he drives, you will sleep unless he tells you not to. You will do what he says every evening when he wakes up. When it is about time for him to wake up, you will stand by the trunk and open it and wait for him. You will forget everything that has happened to you. You are no one. You did not exist before this. Do you understand me? And you see the guy slowly lift his head. Your life before did not exist because you are nothing. You are nothing but purpose and his motivations. Do you understand me? like lift his head what are you and you see the voice slowly like his lips part and you see like spittle like kind of like be connected a little bit and you see for a second it's like he's trying to formulate a word and he says nothing yes you are nothing now go do what you are supposed to do and you see like the figure gets up and he and he steps and he and he like steps towards you and he just stands there dumbly almost like he is of, of like the old zombies before zombies were George Romero and, and like he's hypnotized in a day state and Ilanipi looks at you he's like when you are ready to travel should be in a few hours you hit the road and you follow the path that your group set to follow and I am sure you will catch to them I've spoken to any he, and he looks and he's like describe the vehicles to this one that they took so he knows to keep an eye open when they're on the road I wish you luck Jasper and I am sure one day We'll see each other when you help your pack free. And he kind of sees for a second, he chokes up a second. He's like, free our mentor, our mutual mentor. I will do so. And I thank you for the gift you've given me, Ilanibi. I thank you. And he nods and he's like, go sort of Kane. And he like sits back and he like closes his eyes as if he has to rest. Basically, Ilanibi was telling this guy like his purpose is either to drive yeah. or to do whatever. You know what I mean? Kind of looks at you. He doesn't have to spend any blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, temporary. Yeah, yeah. He's a uh, what do they call that? Uh, conditioned. He looks at you like he's awaiting some, something to be said. All right. Well, my friend, you don't die this night, and if you prove useful, might not be for several nights in the future. So I will rest first, but then we shall depart. You will find the others in a. They have this uh, old truck and this large van that the, the two trucks really. When I were covered for, to protect us from the day, you will protect me during the day. Do you understand? AC slowly looks at you like it takes like like there's like a ten second di- uh ten second lag from what you said, and then he like shakes his head slowly up and down as drool a little bit, kind of like starts to like go down his chin. And if anyone asks you, just say you are driving this, you are taking this car to uh, its owner across the, the country. I am taking this car to its owner. Across the country. Good man. Good man. It is like you say that for a second, you smile and you look at him and he's just he's still blankly like staring at you like are you gonna rest for a couple hours? So what what do you want to do when you rest? You want to try you want because you have how many aggravated do you have now? You have like two aggravated, right? Yeah, I had two, so and I so I have I think I have full right now, so I think I'm I think it's yeah. spend five to heal one thing of aggravated. A night, so you can heal one and then hit the road if you want to. I'll let you. That's do what that. I want to do. Yeah. Okay, we can say that you did that, and like in three hours, you can hit the road, and and you should be able to drive because they left like at midnight. If you want to do that, and then you could drive and then switch out at one point. Yeah, I want to do, do that. So you're driving the Rolls Royce. They left a classy vehicle for a classy East Coast scholarly gentleman like you to drive. Of course, it's faster, so they probably had a tactical reason for doing that. And I think that's what their reasoning was. They were going to leave the fast car behind for you to catch up. 
like as soon as you get in, you get comfortable in like the leather seats and you, you hear like, you know, you adjust yourself and you're like on the wheel and you look and the figure opens the door, sits in the seat and it just puts his head against the window and falls asleep because the condition, he said, you'll sleep when Jasper drives unless he wants you to do something. You know what I mean? So like, it's almost like you're sitting there, you look and all of a sudden he's out right away. There's no like dozing off. You start the vehicle. And you start burning down the roads, the headlights just like are piercing the darkness and you're almost like feel energized because not only did you heal that wound, not only did you, you know, because you feel like you went from like down to up, right? You know what I mean? Like, like you, you did this big thing that was important to you. You felt guilt like afterward for doing it, almost like a feeling of like impulsiveness. And then you like get this pep talk from someone who's who, who's been a sword of the cane sort of came for a while and now you're on the road and you got that like exhilarating freedom that your pack that you had with your pack and you know that you're catching up it's almost like knowing your friends at a bar and then soon you're going to catch up and get to drink with them and catch up and have fun too as you're burning down the road you, you see this cafe it's like before you get to the juarez checkpoint and, and the war the bridge that crosses the Rio Grande from El Paso to Juarez, and you see this diner that's like on the side, and you see like you're looking through the windshield, and you see like a, a, a hick deputy cops in there with a notepad, you know what I mean? And there's this like, and you can see where like there's this ambulance, and like they're taking out this gurney that has like a sheet over it, like there's some body there, and you know I don't know what you think or whatever, but just just a tie to the fact that your pack mates, you don't know that, but your pack mates were visiting there, and you see like there's blood, you can kind of see through the big window that's on the front you can kind of see uh, blood that's like on the countertop you know what i mean and like on the floor a little bit which i don't think it would be hard for you to to put two and two together and think that maybe your pack stopped by and grabbed something to eat you know they must work on their manners i'm afraid as soon as you talk you see like the head pop up from like its windshield and slowly like turns around looks at you like it's waiting for you to give a command for a second no you can rest you can rest sir i don't need you at the moment and then you hear, boom, like the the head hits the the wind, you know what I mean the 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 window of the door as he's like you hear a slow like snoring coming out of him as you guys are you're driving you get to the border checkpoint and you see like an old border patrol guy like I said before an older white guy as he's like standing there or sitting in the booth and he looks down at you and you see like as soon as he sees like white male in a Rolls Royce he's just like oh yeah go ahead and move on and as he says and moves on and like motions his hand slowly like this across. You follow his hand, and, and as you see, like, you can still see, you can see, like, em, like the place, half of it burned down, and you can see, like, like smoke still just a little bit, you know what I mean? Because it's been a day, but you know what I mean? You can see, like, ash and just, like, it totally, it looks like, for, for lack of a better term, the, the Kentucky Club was on a corner of two streets, right? It looks like the two streets that connected the corner, like, just got, like, rioted. It looks like L.A. riots, Watts riots, you know what I mean? It just looks, like, totally destroyed, torn apart and everything like that. As you keep driving, eventually it becomes like starts. You, you know, it's about dawn in an hour. You switch over on the trunk of the car. The mortal starts driving them. And the next night happens, low blood pool point. You snap back into reality and you're like curled up, like in this kind of like fetal position in the car and in the trunk with your face like facing towards the, where the hood would pop up. And your eyes open. You see stars. You just see tons of stars bright and distinct and just like piercing and there's thousands of them and then you see this as you're sitting there and you seem to be watching the sl the 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 stars you see the silhouette looking down it's extending a hand to you to like help you out i take it and say thank you now it is my turn and you can rest sir any points and you see him point to like you you see you're at like outside of this little you're on the side of the road and you're outside of like this little set of like how do i call them like shanties that are like a hotel you know and you see the dairy truck and you see mitch's old pickup truck sitting there so you see these like little shanty shacks set up right and you see you see Mitch, he's standing there. You see Cora, she's standing there. I think Cora said she put a blanket around herself. I can't, or made a poncho out of a blanket or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, she said that. Didn't she like made a poncho out of a yeah. blanket? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, you see Richard kind of just standing on the uh, side, and you see this huge figure where basically like like pulling this 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 figure out of the back of the the dairy truck pulling out of the back and like you see like there's like this little like lip that they like little uh, tailgate that comes out to where you can step on the tailgate to get inside 
but like the figure just grabs this 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 figure by its feet out to where like the head hits the lip and then it hits the ground and he starts dragging it and you realize just from the connection of the pack that it's coyote but like from the light of the stars and the half crescent the half moon something is like different about coyote like it almost like you can see like a silhouette that is coming from his 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 forehead almost but it's you're about 100 yards away so it's real hard you know what i mean for you to kind of see the changes uh that have occurred to coyote so scenes on you what do you Okay, so I turned to my uh, driver, basically like, you can rest in the car, stay there. And he nods his head, he goes in the passenger seat and goes to sleep. And so I just leave him behind, I'll just walk over to the uh, rest of the groups, going, our reunion is at hand, brothers and sisters. Howdy, Jasper. Hello, hello. <clears throat> I'll just grant and nod. <laughs> you, why? I, it's... Quite the change. Beautiful. I will hold my palms out stretched and say, "What do you think?" It's unique. Can I see? Can I see the car with the driver in it? Yeah, because you, you look at where, like, basically he walked from. Jasper is basically okay. behind Jasper, where he he stays standing facing you. Behind him, you see like the road that you guys were on, and then you see expanse of desert. And you see all these like bright fucking night stars. Like seriously, the stars are so crisp, and you see the silhouette of the Rolls Royce that's parked along the car. You can't see, like, there's someone in the car, but you can see, like, the car is there along the road, like it was pulled over on the side. Okay, so I'll uh, sniff over, I'll kind of glance over Jasper's shoulder towards the car and I'll say, hey, you bought me a snack, huh? Don't consume him. We, He is a useful driver. Driver? Oh, okay. So you guys are all standing there. Uh, you got the body that uh, Coyote threw in the hotel room. I think you guys said you wanted to clean her up or something like that. Was that the plan? Or I know Mitch wanted him to br- wanted Coyote to bring him in there. Uh, did you have any plans, Mitch, for what you wanted to do? Or was that was that, I think it was to clean up, right? Or am I wrong? Yeah, it was. To I clean think up. it was. Okay. So who's going to clean up the body? The girl. The girl. Yeah, I'll do it. Uh, you <laughs> see the lumbering figure, Coyote, and again to remind you have coyote's looks you know he has like the the yellowish bone colored horns that like are like jagged coming out of his forehead and he has like this um didn't you make his skin like you made it because you didn't completely get done you made his skin like oh you didn't change the color you made his mouth all super wide like jagged like his jawline like his jaw his mouth goes from like ear to ear now he has like elongated jaw that comes out so it slurs like his it's would you say your voice is normal it's your call if you want the voice to be normal or if you want the voice to be like have a little distinct sound now because of that or what it's gonna have like uh when he talks a bit of a hissing coming out the side of his cheeks maybe a bit drooly sounding you know when someone has too much saliva in their mouth i'm 100 percent down for that man i like that a lot i think that'd be even creepier and you see like like yes and you see the skin was kind of like there's bumps and rivets over the skin but like it's not a finished work yet you wouldn't know that jasper you know what i mean or any well i guess the rest of you wouldn't know talking to cora but you wouldn't know that Jasper, yeah, but you see him lumbering towards in the room. All right, scenes on us. Let's go. Uh, are you just gonna walk in there, or what you gonna do? Because you see, right now, the girl is actually laying on this floor, right, and she, her her eyes and her mouth were flesh crafted shut. So it almost looks like someone took like flesh colored putty and just wrapped it over. You 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 see her laying there on her back, and you see his like dirty blonde hair. That, that greasy blonde hair that's just like flayed out behind her. She is wearing that white waitress outfit that she had at one point, but you see like feces and other bodily fluids have like, due to her not having any restroom or anything, have kind of like made the dress, uh, stain the dress in the lower waist area. The top part of her, of her, of her skirt's kind of been ripped open. You see like this colored flesh of like a you know late 40s woman who, who whose flesh probably hasn't seen sunlight and you see the trace of like varicose veins starting like on the upper part of one of her breasts you know and and you can kind of see like like skin spots that 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 like like that are all across the the landscape of her upper chest there and you, as you look down you see she has like these ripped nylon pantyhose that are underneath and only has one cheap like white shoe that she had that she had on you see there's runs in the pantyhose and you, you can see like they're kind of tore and you also see like similar varicose veins going along where you see the opening like along the side of her thigh and uh on her on, on the side of one of her calves 
and and you can see the chest rising and falling but the breathing's like shallow you know it's not like a breathing of someone who's like healthy and and who's awake or conscious or anything like that so uh scenes on you i re- immediately regret agreeing to clean her up i don't know how much cleaning up can be done to be honest with you because it's not like you guys have change of clothes or anything like that you know what i mean but you can just walk away if you want to it's, i'm not like you know gonna be like if you want xp you got to clean her up or nothing to that extent you know like <laughs> yeah yeah if you turn around and choose to be like fuck this you know fucking sabat right what are our surroundings again so we're in the is there, is there there's like a, a bathroom nearby Bathroom. There's a bathroom. I'll, yeah, yeah, that's in there. Go ahead. And it has one. I'll, I'll just pick her up and carry her in. Okay. And it has one of those pulling showers. It doesn't have like running water, but it has like where you pull the string and like the water would shoot out of the spigot because it's tied to like a uh, whatever you call that that whole silo of water, you know, that's on the side of the of this room. So you, you, you just put her in the tub and kind of just like pull the string down to get her wet like that. Is she conscious? You can't tell because her eyes and her and her mouth are been vicissitated. Oh, shut so it's like this weird feeling of like there's this it's almost like this in a way you feel this weird connection with her because it's like she's livestock in a way that almost like you know back when you were living in mexico before you became the douchebag that you were you had like this grandma who made who, who cora reminded you of and she used to like yeah. raise these chickens and she told you when you were a kid one time like don't you used to try to get attached to them when you're like four or five and she used to tell you in spanish like don't get attached to these little chicklets because they're going to become chickens and you made the mistake one time of becoming attached to one and to where it grew and you would feed it and then she butchered it one spring and it, and it really kind of affected you so after that every time that you would be with your grandmother you had this sense of like and maybe it was even the start maybe where like the little bug was planted in your head that eventually made you the killer that you were because she kind of mm. she kind of scolded you and punished you and it was like told you she told you not to like feel an attachment to livestock you know what i mean and, and that you learned your lesson and it maybe scarred you and put that little bug in your head that eventually made you become what you eventually became now looking down at this figure you kind of get that sense, you know, like looking down, like this isn't a person that this is like livestock, especially with the eyes and mouth being closed. Mm. It's almost, you know, they can't, it can't, it can't articulate. It can't beg. It can't plead. It can't deal. It can't do any of that stuff. It's just there. And, and as the water is running off it, you're looking down and it's just there. That's, is there, that's what, um, is there any like towels or anything like that in the room? Or is it a bit? Yeah. Yeah. There's some, you got some towels there that Mitch had used, and they're they're semi dry. You know I'm what I mean? Just gonna rip off all the the shit the shit covered clothes and stuff, so that she's naked. Okay. Being clean, right. and I'm I'm actually going to lean in and feed while this is happening. All right. How much are you gonna take? Uh, can, you can kind of gauge from a mortal how they're doing while you're feeding on them, right? Like how close to death they are. Yeah, oh, yeah. You can. T- I won't yeah. take heaps. But I, I'll, I'll say- take enough. I'll take maybe two or three blood pool. If I may. Okay, you can take two. Yep. Uh, yeah. What's your blood pool currently at right now? Two, three, four, five, nine. And that's after blowing a blood nine. pool earlier. Go ahead. You can take two. Sure. Thank you. Uh, I'll, uh-huh. I'll, while I'm doing that, I'll kind of caress her eye sockets with my thumbs, where the eyes were in the mouth as well, in a creepy fashion. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, y'all, you mean, you mean you're like taking your thumbs along your eyes? Is that what you're saying? That are yeah, just shut? gently kind of massaging them. Oh, okay. And I'll be singing an old folk song that my grandma would have sung when doing. Oh, wow. That's stuff with the livestock. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Okay. And so, do, are you saying you replaced the dress with the towel? Is that what you're saying? Or are you just saying you just took it off and just. Yeah, when, like, when, her when off? she's done, I'll dry her off and wrap the towel around her and then bundle her up and carry her out again. Okay. Okay. So you see, and you can't move her or anything like that either. You know what I mean? You're just kind of like cleaning, like the body's just like, you know what I'm saying? Like Lena, she's probably in some kind of mental shock now. You know what I mean? Physically tired or exhausted. Who knows? You guys see him walking out and he has like this, do you, how do you carry her? Like, do you carry her like, like a uh, groom over the, the, the wedding? Yeah, and, you know, like, like that. Okay. Just a matter of time. You see him coming out with this figure, guys, and you see, like, she doesn't wear, she's not wearing the dress anymore, but she has, like, towels wrapped around her, you know what I mean? Like, her upper and lower body. And you see, like, she's, like, flung back and her hair's coming along, and you see him walking out, and the hair's wet, and you see uh, him him walking out. Uh, go ahead, scenes on you guys. Where do you want to, where do you want the girl, guys? Where should I put her? Throw her back in the truck. Okay, I'll go and gently place her down in the truck. Is it necessary to keep 
that? Uh, could be a snack on the run. Okay. She's not exactly going to go anywhere or scream. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> kind of like a road beer, I guess. And I think it's kind of a telling sign, too, that you guys see, like, Coyote treat this, like, figure with, like, like, like com- not compassion, but, like, I don't want to say caring, but you know what I mean? Like, almost like it's a <laughs> delicate little thing. Because usually he's, like, throwing people over his shoulder, and he's, like, dragging them through the desert. He just dragged her in there. Like, he literally pulled her off of, like, <laughs> dragged her in the room. And then now he's, like, carrying her all gentle and, like, setting her down back there, you know? Like, there's some kind of reverence there, you know? Uh, all right, scenes on you guys. What, what's the plan now, uh, Pale Riders Pack? Jasper, can you tell your driver to drive another car? <laughs> he seems a bit dim-witted. I don't know um, how have you managed to to get here with him. I don't know. As he's been, he drives me during the day, and so whenever I drive, he sleeps, so... I don't know how practical it would be to keep a uh, hum- keep someone like keep a mortal uh, driving for so long. It's they still need sleep. Right. We would be advancing a lot faster if he could drive for all of us during the day in this uh, van over there. Mm. That was my plan. And then so again, so um, as far as I know, the roads will turn worse uh, very soon. So what do you suggest? We and you guys would be the, all the roads here for now and just take the other more suited uh, car- vehicles more suited for rough road or what do you suggest? I don't think any of our vehicles are suited for rough roads. Fair point. We could get horses. If you truly feel it's necessary. You guys are right there mm-hmm. where it says Torion and it's like at the 35H mark, 35 hours there. Mm-hmm. So you can do two ways now. You can go, you see that yellow road, that path that goes east. You can kind of take that down to the coastline to start traveling down that road to the coastline, you know, which would be attract less attention. Or you can go down this way through Mexico City where I think you guys already decided you didn't want to attract attention, right? You know, you want to go the less conspicuous routes. So yeah, these roads Mexico. might be, yeah. so you guys are going to cut, you can cut across that yellow road and then hit that gray road. So that yellow road will be a little you know, bumpy, you know, rough, but once you get to the gray road there, it won't be as bumpy. So does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you guys are going to take all three vehicles, that's fine. What's the riding order right now that you guys are going to travel in when you go that way? I figure we'll do the dairy truck first. Who's going to, is anyone going to drive with Richard? I know, Cora, you, did you want to r- drive with Richard this time or did you want to go with Coyote and keep working on your thing or what did you want to do? Um, I'll go with Richard. Sure. You'll go with Richard. What are you going to dr- uh, do, Mitch? you going to drive the pickup truck again? Yeah. All right. And Jasper and Coyote. Jasper, are you going to drive the rolls? I yeah. guess you're the only one who can drive the rolls. And yeah. uh, Coyote, who, who are you going to roll with? I'll ride in the back with my new friend. But when I see Richard and Abuela leaving together, mm-hmm. I will look at them a little bit sad. Like, hmm, you know, my two... My two bros, my two peeps. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're, if you're gonna, are you gonna, are you gonna ride in the back of the ice cream tr- or in the dairy truck with in the, back uh, of the with, truck with the girl? With the, gonna be... with the girl. Oh, Mitch. She's my new. Oh, with the girl. My new plaything. Now she's in the back of she's in the back she's in the back of the the dairy truck. So you're gonna um, it's gonna be pitch black in there. You know what I mean? You're not gonna be able to see anything. Mm-hmm. I don't need my eyes. Hello, folks. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts, or just media in general that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded, one which wouldn't be drowned out by random posts and discussion so that your media could get the attention you want? Well, we have the answer for you in a Facebook group we run called White Wolf RPGs Gameplay and Media. The group is specifically ran with the sole intent of it being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. We are currently over 1,000 members strong and we are continuing to rapidly grow with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there. High Level Games, the industry's first choice in taking your games to the next level. 
We are a podcast blog and new media network at highlevelgames.ca. We have blog posts about all of your favorite games going up five days a week and a podcasting network with actual plays and shows that discuss role-playing games with more rolling out all the time. We are on iTunes, Twitch, and YouTube. Find out more information at highlevelgames.ca, a site that certainly isn't controlled by a shadowy board of directors of otherworldly origin. That's highlevelgames.ca. Please, help. They're coming. (laughs) The mission seems simple enough, don't they always? Simple sweep and flush out operation. We loaded them up in a hazmat tanker in Montreal and shipped them to a downtown warehouse in the Valley of the Sun. It would have been in and out in a few nights. Well, we wouldn't be telling the story if it all went as planned, would we? I go ahead and uh, I pop quieted. All right, yeah, I'm going to run at him and do a sweet spin kick and knock his head off. We're waiting to see whether or not the abomination kills us. Shufflehead Chronicles is available on the Critical Hints feed. Search for Critical Hints in iTunes, Google Play, or any other podcatcher. I, I, I don't think this is how... No. The Los Angeles metropolitan area is constantly growing and changing. The central district is full of new buildings. The Hollywood and Wilshire districts, once far from downtown, now are part of a which spreads past Beverly Hills and out to the ocean. But why is all this going on in Los Angeles? Why is Los Angeles an exploding city? Neon Masquerade The Demon's Mirror Thirteen Candles Three chronicles running through the undead veins of the City of Angels. The Esoteric Order of Role Players Actual Play Podcast invites you to drink deeply. Go to EORpodcast.com and search the duets tag to find out more. Hi guys, I wanted to let you know about my YouTube channel, the video journals of Mike Bailey. Mike Bailey is a character I play in a live action vampire game called New England Nightmares, which uses the new By Night Studio rules for Mind's Eye Theatre. The Chronicle's set in the city of New Haven, Connecticut, and we run on the third Saturday of every month in Southington, Connecticut. Most of the credit for the stories told in my journals comes from the plots developed by the amazing storytellers who run my game. So the videos on my channel are basically an in-character video logs of the newly sired Ventru Mike Bailey. They follow him from his days as a naive mortal, to his violent embrace during the Anarch Revolt in the City of London, and on to his arrival on the shores of New Haven. The journals show Mike trying to come to terms with his kindred nature, his powerful but impure blood, and his attempts to hide his past from other members of the court of Prince Lucius. So I put out updates every two weeks, and I love feedback and questions, so check out my channel, subscribe, and leave me a comment.